Okay, so here it is Monday. Um, Mike and I were off adventuring last week, uh, Thursday, Friday. We were in Puerto Rico, I was in Illinois. So anyway, we um, were ready to start framing. Um, everything's done as far as the platform, the floor. So I covered it with plastic because it did rain here a couple of days and I didn't want this to swell. It's not marine grade plywood. So um, anyway, I'm gonna take the plastic off. Uh, say Wednesday, went and got all the uh, two by fours for the walls and bottom and top plates. So get that done today. My plan is to get it all the walls framed today. And then I will build trusses tomorrow and get those installed, get the roof sheeted, and then get some waterproofing on the, on the roof and then um, building wrap it. So we'll take you along. We get to see some Mike and Mike adventures. Mike, Mike we need to go get some lunch too today. We're gonna, are we gonna go get some uh, rotisserie chickens at Probably Publix, the Mike? Publix rotisserie moho They're pretty, pretty good, moho flavor. Yeah. Lemon and garlic's good too. That one is good. Yeah, yeah, no tacos today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So That's I'm just laying out our, uh, our studs. This is gonna be the bottom plate. So I'll lay these out, lay another two by four by 12 next to it. And then they will mirror each other. And again, I forgot my construction pencil, carpenter's pencil. So I'll just use the, use the Sharpie. Matt has plenty. And this is our corner. So we have a stud here and then the other wall, figure the other wall is three and a half inches, right? So if the other wall comes this way, it stops right here. So this is our inside corner right here. So we have something to nail to if you were gonna do drywall or whatever. And this also makes it so you can nail this wall you know, effectively here and here, this wall that comes into this wall. So anyway, that's, that's what that is. So I'm gonna get another two by 12 and we'll mirror these two. All right, so I've got the studs are all laid out on the top and bottom plates. Now what I was trying, to, what I was figuring out was um, stud length. So what I want is I want my siding, my T111 siding to come down almost to the bottom of this. So I'm gonna keep it three quarters of an inch up. So you gotta factor the, the, the size is only eight foot, right? So you got eight feet of, of siding. So you factor in the, the top and bottom plate, there's double top plates, so plus the bottom plate. So that's four and a half inches. I'm gonna bring it down to here. So my total overall uh, length of stud is ends up being 88 inches if I keep the siding three quarters of an inch up. And then there's gonna be trim boards that cover out here anyway, so you won't even seal this, see this reveal. So anyway, so I'm gonna cut cut all the studs at 88. So I gotta count my do my stud count here. I think we need, should be 11, 12, 13. So cut 13 studs, get this wall nailed together, tip it up, brace it off, get it nailed down, and then we'll build the second one over here, and then we'll do the little short walls, so. doing I'm just setting this up so I can just come by tip this up nail them all off and then do the top plate and then uh, we'll be ready to tip it up get it plumb and brace it off these are Temporarily, I'm going to use this corner, this brace here, just to hold it plumb. So, and it's plumb right there. Okay. 
I can tip this one up and then I'll do the same thing over there. Going good, why? Going well. Uh, I'm gonna do this wall, get this one plumb, and then we can build the short walls, get them stood up, and then we can put the doubler on the top plate and get them all tied in together. And then I can start figuring out, I'll probably lay out trusses on the, on the uh, floor in here. Maybe snap some lines, build my trusses in here. I think we're doing well. It's not as hot as it was. It's great. It's not like, what is it? What was it? Feels like 105? Yeah, that was hot, Mike. 110, is that what you said? Mike, you said 110. I gotta start repeating your questions since you don't, or your uh, statements because you don't have a microphone, Mike. People wanna know what you're saying. And you don't say much, Mike. But when you do, it's very valuable information. I'm gonna keep going, Mike. Did you say keep going? I will do that, Mike. All right, so I'm uh, framing the back wall right now. I'm gonna decide to stick frame that, which means that I'm not gonna build the wall ahead of time and lean it up. I will put the bottom plate in, um, toe nail the bottom of the studs into the bottom plate, and then through nail the top. That's just gonna be simpler for me to do it by myself rather than trying to lean it up and wedge it between the walls because it's, it's a nice tight fit. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna work on that right now. It's looking good, Mike. Thanks, Mike. You're a good guy for saying that. You're, good You're a really, really good cinematographer, Mike. You know, I don't. Pay, people give you your credit, don't they? They, they do say how good you are. Like your editing skills are on on par with the best, Mike. You make me look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's true. All the fumbling and that is true. you know, I the and I when I have to pause thing. and say, hang on, I got to get on YouTube and figure out how to do this. Then it does it, happen all the time, Mike. And we have to cut. In it fact, out. I have it pulled up on uh, my laptop somewhere <laughs> around here. All right, time to get working. All right, back wall's done. Now, last thing we need to do is put the top plate in that ties the two walls together, which is this one. Probably gonna have to trim some more of this tree. No, I'm looking at it. Thought I did enough, but maybe not. So last wall, front wall with the doors. So our double door gonna go spot right in the center, right here. Yeah, it's getting there, Mike. A clean workspace is a safe workspace, Mike. Yeah. Good old fashioned barn raising. Back in the day, you used to call your neighbors to come help you. I know. I don't have any neighbors out here <laughs> helping me. Everybody's in there in the ice air conditioned area. <laughs> Matt walked by. I've never seen him walk so fast. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, bye. Very important. Very important. Yeah. 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 We keep saying that. I think it's uh, the the overwhelmingness of the current temperature. A little heat drunk. <laughs> heat drunk. All right, so I'm gonna got the walls as far out as I can frame them. The rest of it's door. So what I did was I know the door, the rough opening is 66 and three quarters, or yeah, 66 and three quarters. So what I did is measured off, measured off the outside of the wall. I know the center line is at six feet. And then, so I marked my center line and then came 33 and three eighths.
from the center line out each way, and that's the inside of the rough opening. So this is inside a rough opening. So here, we have a stud here. There's our cripple and our kings out here. All right, so get rid of that. So we don't use this one. So this one and this one. All right, so now we'll frame that out. It's hot. I think I need to go get something more to drink, Mike. More, how do you say LaCroix? La Croix. Is that how it's really said? Probably is, huh? La Croix. It's French? How do, it's probably Pepsi Cola, Mike. Let's see who makes it. A division of. Let's see. Where does it say? I don't see it. It says it's natural essence flavor. So what does that mean exactly? I don't know. I'm not sure. La Croix. LaCroix. I'm going to say it the American way. We don't pronounce things right. We do it our way. So this is uh, the last of the doubler for the top plate. So you can see I've got all of it done. I get this, this, uh, this section to do the last. All right, so it's basically framed. Um, walls are done. So all I have left to do is I've got four blocks to put in here. And that's it. So I'll do that, toenail those in, and then tomorrow I'll uh, start building the trusses. If I can get all the trusses built tomorrow, which I should be able to do, um, we can start installing trusses. And then I can get the building wrapped and get the roof um, watertight. So I'm gonna put an underlayment on there that'll, if it rains, it won't get inside the building. So anyway, we're just about there. And it can start, it's gonna start staking shape now. It looks pretty big now that it's framed. Don't you think, Mike? Yeah. Cool. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's hot. I'm going to go have another, le, what is it? Le Croix. Yeah. Iced coffee sounds good too. All right, so I was just explaining to Mike here how this works. So what I did was, we know the outside of wall to outside wall is 12 feet, right? So this is, this line here, this plumb line is effectively the outside of our wall. This is the top of our wall, okay? So what I have is 12 feet from outside a wall to outside a wall. So what I did is measure to the center. This is the center line at six feet, right? So from six feet, I measure up here, and that's, that's, our, that's our rise. And since we, have, we only go by the six feet of the six feet here, you'll see, right? Six feet right to there, 72 inches, right? For every foot of run, this is called run, and this is called rise. So every foot of run, we're going to go, because it's a 6 in 12, that means 6 inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. So since we have 6 feet of run, 6 inches per foot, that's 36 inches of rise. So if we go from top of wall to here, we got 36 inches. There's our, there's our 6 in 12 pitch. So that's how I come up with that. And I came up with the pitch that I wanted. You could do a flatter pitch would be a four and 12. I don't want to go too high like a eight and 12. So a six and 12 is a nice pitch for a shed, I think. So then what I did was laid everything out on the ground, cut my first two boards, and then I made a jig with these blocks. And then now every time I just set my board in there or set my two boards in there, get my, uh, my gusset plate, put my gusset plate on there, nail it off, and then I know everything's fixed in position so every truss will be identical. So that's how I do it.
That's essentially how it's gonna look, Mike. So you see how our bird's mouth sits on top of the wall? Uh, and the extension, the protrusion, that's our eave. So what I did is I just used an eight foot, eight foot board, and then what was left on the outside is ends up being our eave. So being as this eight, eight feet ends up being eight feet, it's two sheets of plywood width. So it works out perfectly. So that'll balance. You can kind of get an idea what our height will be. Obviously I'm gonna have to trim the tree a little more. So the ends, the ends only get, this is an outside wall or outside truss, I should say. So this end gets plywooded with the siding. So we don't need a, we don't need a, a, a gusset on this side, just the inside. So I've got two ends, this one and that one that are both outside trusses. So we only use one plate on those. The rest have double. This is the last one. All right, Mike. So all the trusses are built. I'm getting rid of all the, the little jig that I made on the floor. Got all those pulled up. So next thing to do is uh, install the trusses on the uh, top of the walls. Okay, so while Mike Waba was busy shooting OG shorts and the OG Academy, that's very important stuff for you people. I couldn't wait, I got impatient and I installed the trusses. So it took about, what, about an hour and a half to get all these put up. And then I installed some, basically like a strong back here to keep the spacing uh, on our layout. You know, so I, basically what I do is I take the top plate, mark them on both sides. We set up the trusses, I nail them, toe nail them off, um, and then come back. So those are all on 24 inch centers, right? And then I come back and I put the strong backs in so that way they're not tipping out in the meal, field anywhere. So that keeps us on layout so when we put plywood on, everything's nice and square. Um, next thing I have to do is Trevor, grab that bucket. Right. So these go on next. So these are going to get screwed to the top plate and then screwed to the uh, to the truss. So these are standard operating procedure around here, around these windy, hurricane-y parts. Anyway, so that's up next. I bought actual uh, Simpson Strong Tie screws to screw those off. You can nail them, but I prefer to use the screws. Um, anyway, so that's, huh? What's after that? After that, we're going to sheet the roof get it sheeted and then get it pretty much watertight. I'll get the underlayment on the roof, get the building wrapped today. That way, if it rains anymore, it poured nice. last night. So if it rains anymore, um, we won't have to worry about water getting there. You don't want it to get wet too many times. One time's no big deal. If it keeps getting wet day after day, well, yeah, the wood swells. And you can see our drainage worked here. Our water came all the way. You can follow the, follow the stuff, went right to here. Puddle up, it went under, and then came out the other side. Nice. So that worked well. Good engineering. Yeah, right? you know, sometimes I have a good idea. All right, so I'm going to get to this, um, get the clips installed, and then we will go grab some uh, sheeting for the roof. Now you can see with all of them installed. See now, now you see what the plumb line, plumb cut is. So that's the end of the end of the uh, eaves, the trusses, right? The protrusion. So there'll be a board that gets nailed on here. Now you can sight down them. They're all at the same angle, all at the same protrusion on both sides. So anyway. Good looking construction, Mike. Good looking construction, Mike. That's what we do around here. All right, so the last truss, because this is going to get sheeted, what I have to do is put in some, some basically some blocking um, to allow me to nail off the, the, the uh, plywood. So I'm doing this on uh, 24 inch centers. So as the plywood's obviously it's four foot wide, so there'll be one you know, edge of plywood starts here. That's two foot, put another one, a center line at four foot, so on and so forth. So that way every time I hang a sheet, I'll have something to nail to. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so we're heading up to Helen this morning, but I wanted to get the roof sheeted and get the Tyvek on the building. It's been pouring rain, so I'm gonna finally get this done so it's sealed up. So I've got Trevor helping me get the sheets up here. We'll get these up, nailed off, get them taped off. Um, this is similar to uh, zip sheeting. It's got a membrane on this side that, that is uh, water tight, I guess you could say. Um, so 
get this face up, get it, get all the seams taped off, and it'll be good for another week. Even if it rains, it'll keep the water out. And I'll, like I said, I'll Tyvek the, the walls so that way everything stays dry and it gets a chance to dry out. The building grew by half an inch in length getting wet. The walls were spot on 20 feet. Now they're 20 foot, almost a half an inch. 20 foot, 7 16 So anyway, and once it dries, it'll shrink back up, but that just shows you how much wood grows when it gets wet. All right, Trev, grab that side. And go your way at first. Push up. So now that all the, all the sheeting's done, it's all nailed off, I'm just uh, taping the seams with this, uh, this here force field tape. It goes with the, with the material. A little tear there. So this will effectively keep the water out while we're uh, in Helen, slaving away. You know, Matt's gonna have us busy, busy hiking and fishing and mountain biking, Mike. You ready? And then I can take my mic off, Mike. No, I got. I can't take it off yet. Okay, so the roof is sheeted. All the seams are taped off. So the next thing to do is I'm gonna Tyvek wrap the building so that way it keeps the water out. Um, like I said, we're gonna be gone for a, about a week. So it's supposed to rain a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna do that next. And then uh, after that, it'll be siding. And uh, that'll be another episode. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right. That's it. See you next time.